Most of us have been in some form of lockdown due to the coronavirus for some 30 days or so. And when those of us in our Ignatian tradition hear the term 30 days, we are immediately drawn back to the 30 day exercises offered by St. Ignatius, a retreat that is offered to Jesuits and others, offering a time of journey with Jesus, the Trinity, to be transformed as the way we live as the people of God. It is a journey that our visiting Tertians from overseas on their formation program have just completed at Seven Hill. The 30 day retreat, those 30 days, invite us to be always on that journey of transformation, of becoming better people. And some of the things that happen in those 30 days will change us for the rest of our lives. It is probably an opportune time now, after these 30 days or so of lockdown, to consider what has really changed us, what has touched us, what offers us personal and communal renewal at this time and possibly forever. We hear wonderful stories of humour, of spontaneous generosity, of people caring and cooking and offering their support for the homeless, those who are alone and the elderly. We're aware of those in healthcare and the risks they take. And we're also aware that it comes at a cost that some people suffer mental illness. There can be domestic violence, struggles, employment, unemployment, uh, a whole range of ways that we see people suffering. Some terrible examples of racism against people from Asia and those who are on visas, temporary visas with no support at all offered to them. And so at both times we can see great life, great hope, great joy, great creativity and generosity, and also suffering and sadness. But it is a journey that calls us to remember and think of that the 30 days and what the next 30 days may now invite from us. It is timely therefore that the, the gospel reading, the Bible reading we had for last Sunday was the story of Thomas. Thomas, called the twin, was not present when Jesus first appeared to his disciples, but they were also locked down uh, after his death. He appears to them as the resurrected Christ, offering them hope and life. And they are locked down. And they are locked down for fear. Fear that they might follow the example of Jesus and also be killed. And Thomas, as we know, wasn't present when Jesus first appeared. And he says, well, I will not believe in this risen Jesus until I can see his wounds and I can touch those wounds in his hands and his side. And when Jesus appears once again and offers that greeting of peace to his friends, he invites Thomas to come forward, to touch the wounds on his hands, to touch the wounds in his side, to see touch and believe in the resurrected Jesus. As we journey forward in the next 30 days, we are invited, I believe, to look back on the last 30 days, especially in those places where we were anxious, afraid, vulnerable, even hurt bringing them to that wounded Jesus who holds the scars of his death and resurrection. But Jesus stands with us as a resurrected, a hope-filled, love-filled, a generous-filled Christ for us as friends and companions in the journey ahead. May Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, be a hope for us in the days that lie ahead of us, May we hold that hope and may he reveal that hope, especially in those areas where he calls us to be people of hope, to be transformed within ourselves, within our families and communities, but for our nation and also for our world. My blessing, my hope, is that each of us may continue to live in hope of the risen Christ. Mm -hmm.